Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's so good to have you back. Welcome to another episode of my Duran Duran discography series. Before I jump into it, I just want to thank all of you so, so much for considering to subscribe and stay tuned to my series. We've finally done it, guys. We have finally hit 1K subscribers, which I'm so excited about. And it's such an amazing milestone to have achieved. Just know, guys, that I'm forever grateful for all your love and support and all the wonderful comments that you guys leave, sharing all your personal experiences and how much the music has impacted you. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to all of you who are subscribed currently to my Patreon page. It's been so wonderful connecting with you guys. If you'd like to check out my Patreon page, you can check out the link in the description box below. You'll be able to have a look at all the exclusive perks that come with being a part of my monthly membership. So guys, we've now arrived at the mid-90s, it's 1995, and Duran Duran have released the album Thank You. As far as band members go, we still have Simon Le Bon, Nick Rhodes, John Taylor, and Warren Cucurulo. So Duran Duran did release this album. It is, as far as I know, entirely a cover album, which is really interesting and not something that I expected from Duran Duran. It's going to be interesting sort of breaking it down, having a listen through and seeing what kind of angle they took in terms of covering certain songs. So just as a quick reference guys, I have listened to all of the original versions of the songs that they cover in this album. Not to throw you off or anything, but I just wanted some kind of benchmark or comparison that I could make to the originals. Some of the songs are already familiar to me in their original form, but we've got the likes of Bob Dylan, Lou Reed, Led Zeppelin, The Temptations, Grandmaster Melly Mel and the Furious Five, as well as Public Enemy, so there's a little bit of a mixed bag of genres once again. The last couple of albums that we did listen to have been very mixed in genres, and I know quite a few of you guys have commented on how much you didn't enjoy the albums for that reason, because they didn't have much of a direction, which I totally understand. I did also read a couple of reviews from critics on this album, and they were pretty brutal. So I'll be very interested to see how it goes and what my take is on it. Before I jump into each track, I'm going to let you guys know who the original artist was, just so you might be able to go back yourself and do a little bit of a comparison. So very quickly guys, I realized in post that I didn't actually bring up the album cover and talk too much about the album cover. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. So we have this really awesome cover here. The album cover actually features all of the original artists of the songs, which I think is really, really cool. I'm not sure if it came with an album booklet or anything like that, but it's really cool that they've kind of gone with all the artists as a bit of a collage. I'm not entirely sure who designed the cover, but I'll make sure to link them in the credits and let you guys know. I also don't have this album on vinyl, by the way, guys. Um, I think this is another one that's really, really hard to find on vinyl. So we're going to jump into track number one, guys, which is called White Lines don't do it and it also says that it features Grandmaster Melly Mel and the Furious Five so it's actually quite interesting to see that they've included the original artists in their cover version so let's jump into it guys and see what we think of it <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to say very quickly, this is one of the few songs on this album that I know very well in its original form. And it's interesting because that rang dang diggity dang da dang thing is, I don't think it's in the intro of the original song because I actually listened to it the other day. So I think Duran Duran have taken that and brought it to the intro, which is very cool. <laughs> Sounds a bit renewed. It almost sounds as if they've kind of brought in the instruments of 90s music, 90s hip hop and, you know, kind of renewed it, if that makes sense. Hard to explain, but that's what it feels like. It kind of feels like we're listening now to a 90s hip hop song and not a, like an 80s hip hop song, which I'm pretty sure the original was the 1980s. Might just be that guitar and that like sort of bedroom beat. Ooh. 
I mean, it's definitely different from the original. Yeah, it just feels like a 90s, I don't know, like industrial rock version. I'm struggling to get a bit of a likeness here, but yeah, it just sounds very, um, it just sounds very 90s. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard Melly Mel yet, which is interesting. Oh, okay, oh, there he is. With that, what was it? Say rock, come on, say freeze, come on. That kind of sounded like they're playing it at a show. Like, you know, say rock, come on, yeah, I'm putting the mic out to an audience. Say freeze, come on, as if they already know the song and have heard the original version of it before. I'm sure it wasn't intended in that way, but it kind of feels like, oh yeah, you guys know the song. Remember this song? We're covering it now. And Melly Mel is with us and he's like, hey, say freeze, come on. It's just kind of what I gathered from that. Electronica, electronica vibe. <laughs> Nick with the um, I don't know, I don't know what that is. It's like an LFO thing, I think. They actually played the song during the Future Past tour, and I think it's on their set list for the entire tour. It was funny because I think I was the only person around my area that was literally up there dancing and going, the longer you stay, the more you play, like rapping along to the White Lines lyrics. And literally everyone around me is sitting down just watching, just watching them perform like, and I'm just there like, yeah. So um, I have heard them play this one live as well, just for the record, but um, yeah, could have gotten on the stage and done the whole Melly Mel situation, you know? <laughs> Free bass, is it? John's in there with and then Warren. Get arrested, gonna do some time. He got out three years from now just to commit more crime. A businessman is caught with 24 kilos. He's in out of jail. Okay, I'm gonna be serious now. I think I can be serious in this video. Gotta love Simon's rapping, he's really getting into it. <laughs> Yeah, that snare. It's a very garagey snare. Would you call it garagey? I don't know, guys. Help me, drummers. Okay, that is definitely a fun track to start off with. Simon's rapping is quite fun and interesting. <laughs> It just sounds like, you know, they've gotten the, the upgraded drums and just gone, yeah. 
let's do a, a reboot of it. And Melly Mel's obviously all for it because he's in the song. But I think it's quite a lot of fun. Like you can have a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh with it. And that's what I did at the concert. My white lines go a long way. And my cousin's just looking at me like, I don't know her. I don't know her at all. But yeah, it's, um, I thought it was quite a bit of fun. I'm pretty sure the critics had a lot to say about it, but to be honest, I thought it was pretty cool. We're moving on to track number two now, guys. I want to take you higher and it's called version one. So I'm going to assume there's another version of this on the album. This song was originally written by Sly and the Family Stone, I believe, but then it was also covered later on by Ike and Tina Turner. I listened to both of those versions as a bit of a comparison, so we'll jump into this one now, guys. Track number two, I Wanna Take You Higher. <laughs> crunk it up ever so slightly. There's a little bit of that like four on the floor kind of. I like the Ike and Tina Turner version, that was cool. They both were cool. I feel like we're gonna be really biased though because I've heard the other two. I do like the bass. some vocal effects coming back in. It kind of has like the 60s and 90s psychedelic-y electronica thing going on. So every time I go to film a video, my words fall out of my brain. But um, yeah, just the psychedelic-y bow bow filtered guitars. And then that four on the floor kind of drum like do, do, do. So yeah, it's kind of kept that funky element going, but it's different. It's different. I do like that guitar though. Warren shredding once again. There's, there is some kind of like distortion filter on that guitar though. Why do I feel like I've just like jumped into the Queen, another one bites the dust or something? <laughs> All of a sudden the whole thing's just kind of taken a bit of a flip. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like this. It's almost like it's sort of fallen off beat. Oh wait, there you go. I got the boom chocolate thing now. Boom chocolate, boom chocolate. Charlie? 
That actually sounds, it's throwing me off a little bit, guys. I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> it's all these, like, kissy bits. Again, they did that little dialogue bit in panning as well. The last album was so, so heavy on panning. And maybe they've sort of carried that over to this one. Yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about that one. It, it was okay. I'll be honest, that middle bit kind of just threw me off a little bit. I'm actually going to quickly mention as well, in terms of streaming, like how many streams the songs have gotten, there's quite a couple of big ones here. So Lay Lady Lay's had 7 million, White Lines has had 3 million, but then all the other ones are sort of sitting between that 100 to 400k listeners mark which to me isn't as high as some of the other ones that I've seen, so maybe some of the filler tracks in between didn't do so well. So, okay guys, we're moving on to track number three, Perfect Day, and the original was done by Lou Reed. Oh, nice. Beautiful ambience behind that piano. Just a perfect oh. day Drink sangria in the bar. Wait a minute. Then later when it gets dark. Sounds like there's a chorus on Simon's vocals. Because I can hear some kind of phasing. But that beautiful ambient texture underneath the piano is beautiful. Go that beautiful texture is beautiful. Just a perfect day. Okay, this is really nice. Feed animals in the zoo. nice i like this one this is beautiful i'm hearing like these high frequency pads and textures once again just going throughout although i'm mostly focused on simon's delivery of this and it's really nice i think the first time i heard the original of the song was in train spotting there's a scene where i think ewan mcgregor's character is in like a taxi or something that is my vague memory of where i first heard it but the original is really lovely Just a perfect day. Yeah, sounds very phased. Problems all left alone. Such fun. Interesting effects that they're using though. Just a perfect day. You made me forget myself. I thought I was someone else. Someone good. Yeah. Oh. They kept his breath in. Wait. Yep. Oh no, slightly in the right. But they've used that stereo space once again with the vocals, which is lovely. Huh? That female part. That was 
that was probably my favorite one so far in terms of production, the vocals, obviously, the delivery. I really liked that. I thought that definitely did the original justice. The lyrics are so beautiful, but it's just written in a very somber way. It's a gorgeous song and it's absolutely timeless. Again, it's one of the most played tracks on the album too, hitting 3.5 million plays. Definitely the top one so far. Let me know if that was one of your favorites as well. Okie dokie guys, we're moving on to track number four, Watching the Detectives. So as far as I know, the original version is by Elvis Costello. I remember listening to this the other day. I'm not a huge fan of Elvis Costello. I don't know a lot of his work. If you guys have any recommendations as far as his work goes, definitely let me know. Ooh. Bit, bit of a reggae kind of motion vibe going on. Yeah. Nice girl's not the one with the defects of a Yeah, definitely. So Red dogs under illegal legs. She looks so good that he gets down. Ooh, and nice harmony. She's watching the detectives. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I like this. It's got this um reggae kind of flavor to it, which I can't quite put my finger on what it's reminding me of, but it's nice. It's actually quite cool. It doesn't sound really anything like the original version, though, I'll be honest. And yeah, I think it's pitched like it's transposed. The vocals are transposed anyway, I like to change. Ooh, that's and then the guitar's in the right. Oh no. It's like a delay on the guitar, like a da 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 Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Oh, an octave there. This is really cool. It feels like this is kind of dread going on. You know, I can sort of picture a music video to this. It's like this femme fatale who commits crimes and she's sort of trying to fly under the radar. That's the images I'm getting. It's like all done in black and white film noir. Wow, my head's exploding with images again. Yay! And it might just be me, but I think the guitar is layered a little bit too. Like Warren's recorded multiple little layers, or they're just being panned very effectively. I was gonna say something else too, but it fell out of my head, which is proof I missed my second coffee today, but whatever. Ooh, hit like a pitched sort of snare there. Like a delay on a snare and then it's sort of pitched. I... Sounds like a knock on a door. This is all Nick, this. Like a 
space invader noises that are all pitched. Space invader. I would listen to this again. I'm not gonna do it on, on video, but I will listen to this again. <laughs> it's very, um, it's very easy listening, but at the same time, I love the guitars. I love, yeah, that reggae kind of da -na, da -na. <laughs> I think I'm hearing a lot of delay on a lot of things in that track, like a lot of delay effect. That's what I was gonna say. Simon's delivery of that was really, really nice. Cause I think Elvis Costello just sung most of it. But Simon was like, like singing and then talking and being like really sultry. I enjoyed that thoroughly. I thought that was really nice. And it's actually had a lot more listens than some of the other ones. This one's had 600K listens. Whereas again, going back to some of the other tracks, you're looking at about 100K between 100 to 400k. Anyway, track number five is Lay Lady Lay by the wonderful Bob Dylan. This is the most played track on the album, guys. I'll be really interested to hear how they've covered this one. Anyone else hearing the intro of Come Undone? Like, hearing the same effects that you hear on Come Undone? I don't know. Could be the same pedal. My big brass bed. Is that a choir pad? Like a slow attack on a choir pad? My big brass bed. Nick Road commented, yes. <laughs> Did I say Nick Rhodes or Nick Road? Having a shocking day today. <laughs> lay, lady, lay, lay across my big brass bed. Once again, it has that psychedelic feel, and I'm going to put it down to Warren's effects on the guitar. But they've took away Until some the elements, which is nice. Day, let me see you make him smile. Again, Simon's delivery is beautiful on that. I do love the original version too. Again, you can't beat the original version of the song. I have a theory of why this version has had a lot of listens or a lot of plays on the album as well. I'm gonna say like some people might have picked this for their wedding. You can kind of see people picking this as like a dance song or someone's probably gonna comment on my video saying, yes, we played this at our wedding. <laughs> if you did, then comment below. <laughs> nice. That high pitch sort of. It's like this um, vocal in the background is like. Sounds filtered though. Stay, lady, stay. Stay while the night is still Pretty. I keep saying that. So pretty. <laughs> 
I thought that was really pretty and they definitely did it justice. I think the structure was moved around slightly. I think the original didn't have as long of an outro. So Simon sort of used those lovely sustained notes in the vocals to sort of bring us out to a finish which is really lovely. I think Perfect Day is still my favourite, but that is a really nice slow sway kind of song that you'd hear at a first dance or at a wedding or something. So we're moving on to track number six now, guys. It's called 911 is a Joke, and the original version is by Public Enemy. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> hmm. on earth it's got like this western like saloony kind of sound going on there Sorry, I just love how I just love how Simon's getting really into this whole rap thing now. I love it. This sounds nothing like the original Public Enemy song. Are there any big Public Enemy fans out there? What do you think of this? Why do I feel like I'm at a saloon square dancing to Public Enemy? This is kind of how I feel right now. Literally, <laughs> like, you know, this is so bizarre. Who's <laughs> Simon doing this epic filtered rap? They put his voice through uh, like an amplifier sort of effect. I don't know how I feel about this one. It's um, it's a bit strange. <laughs> no offense guys. So to you guys, to, to the band. <laughs> I do like the fact that like Simon really does go quite in with the rapping and he puts his own flavour to it, you know? Yeah, again, it's got this like country western kind of vibe mixed with rap and it's not the best combination in my opinion. You guys might really enjoy this rendition of it, but it's a little unusual in my opinion. It's Ooh. Now I got this Yeah. Again, they were probably just having a bit of fun, but like... Okay, I'm going to go with that as my least favourite so far. It's a bit weird going from uh, Bob Dylan, Lay Lady Lay to uh, an interesting square dance saloon rendition of 911 as a joke. I really like Public Enemy, I like old school rap, 90s rap, but I don't know, it just kind of felt like a bit of a hit and miss, and um... You know, they could have added a bit more of a rap vibe like they did with White Lines, but to me it just kind of felt like a bit of a... I don't know. <laughs> I think that's all I can say in that regard. We're moving on to track number seven now, guys. It's called Success, and the original version was by Iggy Pop. Now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know what? I really like the lyrics to the song. Here comes success, here comes my car, here comes my Chinese rug. I feel like Iggy Pop kind of wrote this about fame and fortune and success. Like, here comes my really expensive car, here comes my Chinese rug. I'm raking it in, I'm successful. It's actually a cool song. I like the message behind it. You know, all that hard work has paid off, here comes success. It's a good message. And you know what? I I honestly don't think this sounds much different to the original version. Similar instruments and stuff like that. Just a slightly different drum backing. Hooray! <laughs> Doctor, bring in that British accent and I just got to. Oh, nice. Success. Oh, a little trip there. Wait a minute. Simon was putting on a bit of an accent there and he was doing it before I got to got to. <laughs> Here comes the zoo. He's even got a zoo. I feel like that female vocal is there hiding in the background. Okay, first things first, I'm going to say definitely not a favourite, but it, it was fun. It was another really fun one. And the lyrics, honestly, the lyrics to that song are so cool and, you know, a little bit silly as well. Here comes the zoo, I'm going to crash my car, I'm probably going to wear a dress. I'm trying to think what my favourite Iggy Pop song is. I think it's Sick of You, which I'm sure you guys have probably heard of before. So as far as originals go, we do have a little bit of a mix as well. So we've got a little bit of 60s in there, 70s in there, probably one track from the 80s and then 911 is a joke. I'm not sure if it's 80s or 90s, but majority of what I'm hearing is like 60s and 70s, which is quite interesting too and just kind of speaks on Duran Duran's influences, I'd say. But maybe they're just covering artists that they really admire and songs that they really enjoy singing. I don't really know the backstory around why they picked these specific songs. I'll be interested to read into that in my uh, research and post. We're going to move on to track number eight. It's called Crystal Ship. The original is by The Doors. I absolutely love this song. I absolutely love The Doors. I can't get enough of them. One of my favorite songs is the Alabama song. I just think it's so much fun. But anyway, Crystal Ship by The Doors. By Duran Duran, by The Doors. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Hi Nick. I don't 
don't think I was prepared for that, but that's amazing. Another very well done cover. I like this. And at the very beginning there, you hear all those beautiful textures. Think back to Arcadia with Lady Ice. Oof, that's what I'm getting here. Here's another one for you guys. If you could film a video inside an underwater shipwreck, that would be a great video for this song and that's kind of what I picture here, like a ghost ship or an underwater shipwreck with water ripples once again, like come undone. Very nice. And just to proof that my head explodes with imagery when I hear beautiful songs. Oh, nice. I feel like that pad there is a little bit of an ode to Ray Manzarek. He uses a lot of similar sounds. Oh, chimes. little bit of a delay delay in the vocals there like they've sort of shifted his vocals out of time because it sounds like one vocal is a little bit out of time with the other Love, 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 love. I really enjoyed that one and I need to stop smashing my keyboard. Space car, space car, space bar, space car. I need to stop smashing my keyboard, space bar. I really liked that one. That was really good. There are some good covers in this, guys. What are the critics doing? And that was actually a really nice song. There's been some pretty, um, on this album, but I'll be honest, a majority of what I'm hearing is pretty cool. Anyway, track number nine is called Ball of Confusion in brackets. That's what the world is today. The original version is by The Temptations. I actually don't really recall the original of this one. I did listen to it and I think it's quite an old song. I'm going to say early 60s the original was. So I'm going to be really interested to hear how they cover Ball of Confusion. So track number nine, Ball of Confusion. I'm confusing you guys. <laughs> I'm confused. We're all confused. Oh. People moving out. People moving in. Because of the color of oh, the skin. Oh, more rapid. Run, 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 but you sure can't hide. The only person talking about love, thy brother, is a preacher. Ooh. Wee. It seems nobody interested in learning but the teacher. No one's interested in learning but the teacher. Demonstration. Activation. Obligation to the nation for the future. Oh man, I cannot keep a straight face in this video for some reason. Again, this is another interesting one, but I kind of like the vibe of it. So that ball of confusion. And then they were doing that um segregation. 
Again, I don't know the lyrics very well, but they had like it happening in one ear and then the other ear and it was filtered. That's really cool. And then there was like this um, pitchy, that was me doing a fantastic impression of a pitched keyboard. I actually quite like this now. <laughs> It's, it's weird though, I can't put my finger on what this is reminding me of, but it's reminding me a little bit of another band in the 90s who had a bit of a hard rock kind of element to them, but they did a little bit of rapping, and I'm just not really sure who I'm thinking of. I, I don't think it's Rage Against the Machine. Maybe it is Rage, I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on it right now. If anyone in the comments can help me out there, because sometimes in the actual moment it doesn't come to me, and then I'll walk away, I'll be cooking dinner, I'll be like... <gasps> Oh, that's who it reminds me of. It's that guy. Yes, him. That band. And the band played on. Yes, distorted guitar. I'm here for it. I love how they sort of change it up a little bit too. Is it me too, or does John have a little bit of distortion on his bass? I think he runs it through pedals or something like that. I'm not really sure how it works because I'm not a bassist. I'd love to learn, but I, I don't really know the ins and outs of all of that. So feel free to comment on that. Any bass players or John Taylor fans? What? <laughs> oh, nice. I like the backing vocals in this. Yes. A lot, a lot of effects again as well. Like textury effects as well. But I think through guitar, not on spin. I could be wrong here, but maybe Warren records guitar and then Nick plays around with the guitar textures and samples them. I'm not sure if he does that. What's going on with that drum beat? It's almost like it kind of skips a beat or something. So interesting this one. Really cool, but really interesting too. Really cool, Nick throwing in those little effects at the end there. I really did enjoy that one. I feel like I really could bop to that one and sort of dance along a little bit. It was quite cool. It was almost like a rocky take on the original version. Yeah, definitely felt like a bit of a rap rock element to that one, which for a lot of people that's probably a hit and miss, but personally I thought it was pretty cool. There were some bits that took me on a little bit of an adventure, and I couldn't really figure out what was going on with the tripping up there with the beat, but Overall, definitely not a favourite, but definitely really cool. Moving on now to track number 10, it's called Thank You, and the original version of the song was by Led Zeppelin. Also, the original of the song is so awesome. I didn't say that before, but it is. absolutely nailed it with the textures and the ambience on some of these songs, honestly. The mountains crumble to the sea There will 
still be you and me. This is another one I really like. Okay, I'm going to say they've definitely done the song justice. I think Simon, again, delivers this really, really well. And that beautiful sustained pad throughout that just created that ambience. Oh, so nice. I'm hearing that phasing again on the vocals. I don't know if anyone else gets that. I think Warren has also used a lot of effect pedals here. I don't know what pedal that is. I don't know if this is the best way to describe it, but it sort of crushes the harmonics and crushes frequency a little bit of the guitar. And you just kind of get like this filtered sound coming through. Today, my world, it's mine. Your hand and mine, we walk the mile. I don't know if anyone heard that cool delay. Thanks to you. It will be done. Stunning, stunning. This one's got me. Oh, so beautiful. It's almost like looking up into the sky at night, seeing all the stars. Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm okay. <laughs> Okay, can I make this one my favorite? This is really well done. I really hope Led Zeppelin thought so as well. I think the original of the song is awesome and so beautiful, but they have just knocked it out of the park, especially with all this beauty in the soundscape. Woo! It's making me emotional. And I love the lyrics too. If the sun refused to shine, I would still be loving you. Mountains crumble to the sea. There'll still be you and me. Great choice of a song to cover. Or great choice of a Led Zeppelin song to cover. Don't get emotional.
wow. If there's a top two, definitely would be Perfect Day. And I was going to say Drive-By because it was on Drive-By. Definitely a top two now would be Perfect Day and Thank You. I think they did that so incredibly well. I'm not sure if you agree with me, but you're not allowed to disagree with me. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. But I almost cried again. Oh, two videos in a row where I cry. Anyway, guys, we're moving on to track 11 called Drive By. And I think I looked on Duran Wiki and it is an original. So let's see what we get here. Oh, is that connected to the last track? I think it was. I feel like I've just stepped outside a resort on an island somewhere and I'm hearing all the crickets at night and the ambience of being outside in the evening. Just interesting. Kind of sinister. Oh, very sinister. It was the hottest day in July. July's not hot here. And all along Santa Monica Boulevard, uh. cars were stood still in a gleaming metal. Stretched all the way from Highland back to La Brea. That's a lot of traffic. A young man was sitting, young man was sitting at the wheel on his way to make a pickup. On his way to make a pickup. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest. I feel like I'm on a bit of an uncomfortable trip. <laughs> Turned off Turned the off aircon. The air. She saw the clouds building like great dark towers of rain. Yeah. Ready to come tumbling down any day now. Oh, wow, okay. Not a day too soon. You hear Simon speaking and then it's pitched down a couple of octaves to sound a bit demonic. That's why I feel like I'm on some weird trip. And as the music drifted in from other cars, his eyes yeah, and then that, started that to That out of time vocal or, you know, spoken word. This is the story of his dream. Female vocals back. Hang on a minute. Is she saying sing blue silver? Are we referencing the chauffeur here? Is that what we're doing? We're talking about cars and the chauffeur and, and sing blue silver. <laughs> Did I literally just make a connection? Bing, light bulb. Interesting. It's like your Uber fell asleep in the sunshine. That's what I'm hearing here. <laughs> your Uber. that melody that da, 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 da. the chauffeur there you go it must be some kind of continuation or chauffeur part two or something and it's called drive-by maybe it's about the character in the song the chauffeur 
and it's from a different perspective. So that's what I'm getting here anyway. And I know now that Simon can play Ocarina, so I'm assuming this is him. And they've layered it. It feels like a trippy version of the chauffeur. I like the addition of the strings. The strings give it like the cinematic kind of feel. Okay, so that was an original. That was what felt like a continuation of the chauffeur or a chauffeur part to a little bit of a homage to Rio. Interesting that they decided to put that in this album, but I liked it. It was very cinematic and felt very strange and trippy in parts. And then this epic ocarina solo. Loved the orchestral strings, made it so cinematic. Very cool. Well, on to the last track now, guys. It's called I Want to Take You Higher Again. So... I'm assuming this is the second version of track number two, I Want to Take You Higher. I'm going to go with that it might be slightly different. Let's give it a go and check it out. Track number 12, I Want to Take You Higher Again. Whoa. Cool. This doesn't sound anything like the other one. Again, this is reminding me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. It's got a little bit more of an electronic feel to it versus the other version. sounds so weird but why can I sort of hear the song in a car commercial or something like a really fast expensive car commercial <laughs> oh they brought the boom they brought it back Interesting. I definitely think this version is slightly better than the other one. I'll let you guys um, put your thoughts in there. I like that. Da, 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 that Nick's doing. And Simon's definitely using more of that vocal range once again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I like the low end in this, I think that's what I really like. Like the, the bass and the low end, the bass and the drums are, are mixed in quite well together. Gives it a really good body.
So, seems to me like they had two versions of I Want to Take You Higher and they wanted to include them on the album. So they've they've done just that, but they've done a version one and then they've done I Want to Take You Higher again. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say something. I'm a little bit confused as to why they decided to go in the direction of a cover album. They didn't have a lot of success with Liberty and then they sort of came back with the wedding album in 1993 and they released some incredible singles from that album and then there were some fantastic songs on that album, some that were stronger than others, absolutely. And I feel like they sort of got that momentum back, especially with Ordinary World Come Undone, two of their most popular songs. And then they sort of went in the direction of, okay, why don't we just do a cover album? I'm not sure if the label called for it. It might have been more of a band decision to make a cover album and sort of honour some of their biggest influences. Again, I'm not sure why they chose to go in that direction. Without sounding cruel, I feel like it's a bit of a cop-out because they write amazing music. I know that the band are capable of more. They're capable of writing incredible songs and they could have probably done that if they sort of sat down and thought, okay, let's write, you know, 10 great tracks. Let's come up with 10 great songs but they didn't go in that direction. To release a cover album when you have all this momentum and the fans are like, yes, you know, what, what are we going to hear from you guys next? And they get a cover album and they think, oh, okay, well, what about your music? What about your perspective? What about dipping into Simon's ideas and what ideas Simon has and what textures and synths that Nick's been playing with and Warren being Warren coming up with all these cool riffs and ideas. And so I'm confused. I'm very confused as to why they chose that that direction. And again, I'm not hating. I am really not hating. I'm just confused. That's all I'm saying. It it doesn't make sense to me as to why such an incredibly talented band who are so capable of writing amazing songs, whether it's, you know, five of them or four of them, or even just the two of them, for goodness sake, they are capable of so much more. That's kind of what I would have wanted to see from them from a fan's perspective. But it'll be interesting to know what you guys think, if you guys agree or disagree. But like I said, I really did enjoy some of the covers that they did. There were some covers on this album that did not hit the mark for me at all. One of them was 911 is a joke. The other was probably that first version of I want to take you higher. So there were some that were a bit questionable but others were actually really good and they really did do the artist justice. I just think they absolutely nailed it with the cover of Perfect Day and Thank You and then also really enjoyed Lay Lady Lay. I'm not sure if they released these as singles. I don't know if you're allowed to do that with covers unless you get the full artist's permission. So I'm not sure if they were properly released or not. So it'd be interesting to check that out and see what happened there. But at the end of the day, it was pretty fun going through it and hearing their renditions of these songs. I definitely had quite a laugh going through this one, and as you could probably tell, I was being very silly throughout. I definitely expected more, given that we've just come from the wedding album, and it's sad to see that the critics really did rip into them. As I said, I read a couple of articles about the album, and people were just saying some pretty harsh things but I think they could have explored it a bit more just sort of mixing originals with covers rather than just an entire cover album bar one song. Is this one of your favorite albums of Duran Duran's? I'd be interested to know that too if, if someone says hey this is you know my favorite album I really enjoy it but you know everyone's got a different idea and a different opinion on music this is just my opinion I know that these guys are so incredibly talented and you definitely expect a little bit more coming out of the ideas bag because of that as well. But I'm just going to leave it here, guys. That's all I can really say. We will be jumping into another album from the 90s next. I'm sure many of you are looking forward to it. It will be 1997's Medazzaland. I am so looking forward to it. But yes, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please head over to my channel and check out some of my other Duran Duran deep dive videos. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. If you do once again want to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description box below. But thank you for joining me once again on another discography journey with Duran Duran. This has been so awesome so far and I love the momentum and I just cannot wait to do more of these. 
I will be bringing out a Q&A video very shortly as well. I did also mention I'd be doing another Power Station album deep dive, but I'll probably leave that until the end of the series now just because we've got a lot of content to get through and I'm also falling a bit behind on some of the other things I wanted to film as well. So I'll keep you guys updated with that either way and let you know how all of it's going. But in the meantime, take good care of yourself. Wishing you a good morning, good afternoon or evening wherever you are right now in the world. And I will see you guys again in my next video. Bye guys. Beat is nitty gritty. Sound is in your city too. Ooh. See, this is what happens when I don't have a coffee. I start being silly. But then when I've had a coffee, I'll start being silly anyway. So it's like we can't win here. There's no winning. <laughs> Time to stop recording now before my camera sets fire. Sometimes you've just got to press the stop button. <laughs>